The last thing you want to do is spend two, three, four hundred dollars on a pair of dress shoes, and then just two, three, or four months later, the leather is dried, cracked, or stained, and you have to buy a whole new pair. Today, I'm going to show you how I condition and protect my brand new dress shoes so that they last not just three months, but until the very sun itself consumes us all. In this video, I will cover the exact instructions for how I condition, wax, and brush my new shoes, the theory and logic behind the specific process so you know how it may apply to you, the products I use, how I use them, and why, and what common mistakes to avoid. These are my new Cohen loafers from Beckett Simonon. I actually did not get these for free. This is not a sponsored video. I needed a new pair because my old Cohen loafers that I've had for years are definitely on their last legs. These are great shoes. I wear them almost every day, but turns out they are not made for hiking around the mountains of Colorado in the dead of winter. Would have loved to see that in the description, Beckett Simonon. But I'm not here to judge. I'm here to tell you how to take care of your shoes. First, we're gonna start with Saphir Renovator. We're gonna do this in real time from start to finish so you guys can get really a good idea. This is the best conditioner on the market that I've tried, although there are a variety of other reputable companies from which you can buy conditioners and you really can't go wrong. But they're all gonna be priced around the same, that 20 to $30 mark. Links to all this stuff that I'm using or mentioning will be in the description as well. So we're gonna start off by taking just a tiny, tiny bit. You can see it's like almost nothing. And we're just gonna begin rubbing that into the shoe in patchwork fashion. Now, when you're rubbing this in, you really wanna use the pressure. It's very similar to like if you were rubbing an egg, for example, and you wanted to rub as firmly as you could without breaking the egg. That's a really good example to give you an idea for all of those other very normal human beings who spend a good portion of their Thursday and Wednesday rubbing eggs with a maximum amount of firmness uh, without breaking them. So I'm gonna explain a few important concepts while I'm doing this. The first, again, you'll notice how little I'm using. Guys, one jar of conditioner should last the average person with two to three pairs of shoes several years, okay? So even when you're conditioning your shoes normally, you should be using very, very little of this stuff. And when you're conditioning brand new shoes, you actually wanna use even less. So you'll feel like you're not using enough product and that's kind of a sign that you are using the right amount. Now the reason for that is because to begin with, the probability is fairly high that you don't even need to do this. See how little that is? You can probably barely see, that's even like a little bit much. Like barely I can see even any white on my fingers, just the oils. You see, the leather is already conditioned and treated from the tannery, so it's probably fine, but probably doesn't mean certainly. Sometimes hides hang around in tanneries or hang around in shoemaking factories and they dry out over time and you just never know if a hide happened to be hanging around and that hide got chosen for your shoe or a shoe got was in the inventory warehouse, got kind of buried, and then by the time it got sent to you, it's a little dried out. Using conditioner, if you're using an appropriate amount, will never hurt, but conditioning new shoes means that I never need to worry about getting dried shoes, which I really don't. If I'm gonna spend two, three, four hundred dollars on a product, I don't want there to be a low chance that it's a bit dried. I want there to be a zero percent chance. And especially because there's no risk, I always figure, why not? Now you can see I'm kind of rubbing it into the apron here, guys, and you'll notice that when you do this, especially on Oxfords, but even on these loafers, like in these areas where you have different patches of leather folding or around the stitching, you're not really gonna be able to get the conditioner up in all the small little nooks and crannies with your fingers, and that is okay because we are going to brush it in in our next step. So don't worry too much about getting it into every little crease and corner. You just wanna get as much as you can from the start. And really, when you're doing this, you wanna keep rubbing it until you start to get some friction once you get a little bit of drag on your fingers, then you can kind of stop and move on to the next section. It's going to look a little bit dry and a little bit sad. That's okay, it'll shine up very nicely when we get onto brushing, so don't worry about that. At 
This product also should not darken your leather. So again, it's always good to test your product on your shoe on a small inconspicuous part of the shoe that no one will see just to make absolute sure it won't have a negative response. But this stuff is pretty safe on shoes from one to $300 all the way up to $2,000. So this renovatory you shouldn't have an issue with and that should go really the same with any of those other reputable companies that I've listed. And as far as other companies, you know, I always like to be considerate of other budget options and the fact that not everyone can spend, you know, $400 on a pair of shoes or $1,000 on this or $100 on that. Like budget options are good, affordable options are good. Although to be honest guys, when it comes to conditioner, this jar is 30 bucks from Saphir. Again, you can find them 20 to 30 bucks. It will last you several years and you it will really extend the lifespan of your shoe and this is the best stuff you can get so i would say you know honestly even being someone who likes to be considerate of other price options i'd say if you're gonna buy shoes that are already two three four hundred dollars you really should just budget to spend the extra thirty dollars on a good conditioner much like you would shoe trees you can see here, I've gotten a little bit just like on the sole edge here. You actually don't want to apply a conditioner to the sole edge because that might soften it up in a way that can cause it to deteriorate. It's okay if you get a little bit on it accidentally, it's not a big deal, but definitely don't apply it thoroughly to the sole edge the way you are doing the uppers. Another note as well, a mistake that sometimes people make, this stuff does not go on the bottom of the sole. It does not go on the interior of the shoe. It is only for the exterior of the upper. There are products one can use if you want for the bottom of the sole and the sole edge, but this is not one of them. So we're just gonna keep going around here. You don't need to use your fingers. If you wanna use gloves, you can use gloves, but this stuff won't really stain your fingers at all. It's mostly kind of a natural mink oil derived product, so you're not going to have any issues with toxicity. There is a macadamia nut version for those who are concerned about that. Let's see, like that's that's like a little bit much. And like I applied probably a little bit too much there. You can see this kind of white everywhere. That's okay, I'll just scrape my finger off and kind of scrape some of it off and then kind of blend it into a broader area. Just using one finger here. It's just a happy little mistake. It's okay, it's just gonna be a little bit extra conditioned. Now I would say you probably don't have to do this beyond like, you know, once you get into four, five, six hundred dollars, I'd say your leather is most likely probably fine out the gate and you don't have to worry about this. I mean, you still could, again, it, the, the beauty of this is that it doesn't hurt at all. But if your sh dress shoes are one, two, three hundred dollars, you know, then you're probably talking about leather from kind of a larger production facility much higher probability again of it being a little bit dry. So I like to just do that for those. And uh, the Renovator also has some soft waxes in it, so it'll give a nice soft shine and provide a little bit of protection up front, but we will do more protection in our later steps. But that's it, it's been what, a couple minutes and this is ready to go. So what we're going to do is just let this sit and rest for five to 10 minutes so that that conditioner really absorbs deeply into the leather and the wax is set a little bit before we go on to our next step, which is brushing. This is a hand tufted solid walnut handle horsehair brush from Swedish company, Paul Brungard. It is a beautiful piece of art and indeed an exercise in a type of historical craftsmanship that remains left in only a few places in the world. It is a luxury item that will outlast me and even many of you who do not yet have receding hairlines. It's closer to 2050 than it is 1990. This is an amazing product if you have the budget for it. However, that budget is over 50 US dollars, so I will include low and mid-range budget options in the description, both of which will get you the same results you see here. All right, guys, so I just took a 10, 15 minute break, sat under a table a little bit, thought about 
how I'm getting older, my back's starting to hurt, soon my bones will turn to dust and my mind will fade into the cosmic void. So this is really simple. We just need to take our horsehair brush, guys. You can't mess this up really easy. And we're just gonna start brushing the whole shoe and you'll see immediately, look at that. You see how that shine comes right out pretty much immediately. Now you wanna do this all over the shoe and you're gonna wanna do, kinda hit it in a variety of different directions cause you wanna get again in all those little nook and crannies and you can get also right there in between where the upper meets the welt. And we're just gonna keep brushing here. Now, the reason we use horsehair actually for this is because the bristles are hard enough to actually distribute product effectively, which is the primary purpose, but soft enough to not damage the shoe and also to pull out a nice soft shine from the waxes in the product. So something else you guys wanna keep in mind here, it's really easy to do. This brush makes it a little easier to avoid it because it has outward facing bristles, but uh, you see how they kind of come out at an angle. But when you're getting, especially the interior of the shoe here, for example, you really wanna avoid accidentally hitting the upper or the welt with the edge of the brush. It's really easy to do. I've done it a lot myself. And it'll just give you kind of a nick. It usually won't like damage the shoe beyond repair, but it just kind of stinks when you're trying to do this thing, make your shoe look so nice. You're so excited and then bam, you kind of mess it up and you have to go back and figure out how to fix it with cream polish and so on. So I'm just going ahead and brushing everywhere and I'm hitting it in every angle. But now that I've basically brushed the whole thing, what I'm going to do is kind of finish what, with a brush all in the same direction. And that's because, again, since we have these waxes sitting all over the surface of the shoe, we really wanna make sure we can align them all so our shine is nice and even and has an even grain to it. One more note I'll make on this brush specifically is that this is a higher quality brush, which means the bristles are actually a little bit stiffer than a lower or mid-grade brush. And the reason for that is because the primary purpose of a horsehair brush really is to distribute product, which is so important because if you have uneven distribution of products, especially dyed products like cream polishes, that can result over time in discoloration of your shoe. So that's the primary purpose. The fact that it also shines the shoe is sort of a convenient byproduct. Now, lower and mid-grade brushes will actually pull out even a slightly better shine than this, even though you can see this is pretty good already. So it's not that's a nice quality of the lower grade brushes that even though the bristles are softer, it still distributes well, but it also will give you nice shine, so it's a little bit multi-purpose. If you do want a really high shine, basically the highest you can get from a brush, a nice alternative to this horsehair brush is this yak hair brush here. So actually I shouldn't say alternative, it's more like a companion, so you would hit your shoe with this here. This is from Paul Brungard too. I love this so much. It's so, so cool. Again, I want to emphasize though, you don't need this. This still does the job perfectly well. I never want to make it seem like you need to buy all these $50, $100 products. You know, I want to be very conscious and considerate of budget constraints. You know, this is much like this to a lower grade horse hairbrush. This is awesome if you have the budget and if you're really interested in these kinds of products, but don't feel like you absolutely need it but it's really cool. It gives you like a nice soft brush and it's hard to notice on camera, but it does give it like a nice, just like a little boost to that shine. And that's it. Ain't that just a pretty little loafer? Okay, now you need clinical help. Conditioning hydrates leather. I like to do it, you may not, that is okay. However, this next step is genuinely more important. This is where we really protect our shoes from water, salt, stains, oils, things of that nature. And we do this with wax. I hope that came out as cool as it did in my head. This is Saphir Pat Deluxe. Much like Renovator, one tin will literally last you years. It's like $15, just get it. It will extend the life of your dress shoes. You will thank yourself later.
All right, we're back. We've got the second shoe here because the first shoe when I shot it was out of focus. Like and subscribe for more expert videography tips. Guys, this is super simple, very similar to the conditioner. We're gonna take this wax here and we're just gonna rub our finger lightly. See how much I'm using there? It's like, there's not even any solid wax on my finger. It's more just like a layer as if, you know, my finger got a little bit stained. So that's how little we're using, right? Now start by rubbing this in, very similar to the conditioner. Just try to really evenly distribute it. And this, much like the conditioner, you're gonna feel like you're not really using enough. And that's a sign that you're really using the right amount. All right, so we're gonna go just again in patchwork fashion here. This is just gonna form a thin film all over the shoe. Now this barrier, what's nice about this wax, is the first thing I'll note is it actually helps keep the conditioner in a little bit in my experience I've found because again, in the same way it's keeping stuff out, it's also keeping that conditioner which lubricates the leather fibers, which hydrates the leather in. So especially in an area like where I live in Colorado where it's very dry, this just helps prolong the conditioning of the leather. But then on top of that, it acts again as a barrier to keep things out, so stains from water, oil, kind of salts, like road salts, environmental oils. You know, it's not perfect, but it'll really help just, you know, prolong the life of your shoes, prevent staining, things of that nature. And it does that because essentially the leather is almost sponge-like, right? There's pores of the leather, much like your actual skin, and it gets stained when other outside materials sink into it. So this wax just sort of helps clot up some of those pores to help make the surface more even and uh, already occupied so other materials can't sink in. And when we shine it up, when we brush it up too, you'll also notice it gives it a nice soft shine. And on the note of this being a very thin film as well, you'll notice when you do this, if you do it properly, you'll still be able to see the grain of the leather, the texture of the leather, and that's really what you want, right? We're not covering up the grain of the leather here. We're just putting a very, very thin film to help protect it. And I'm using dark brown here because these are dark brown loafers. I suggest using a matching color. Something you can do is if you wanna do a slightly off color, like you could do for a dark brown loafer, you could do like a burgundy or a maroon color, something that has a little bit of red in it, and that'll turn your brown loafers into something a little more dynamic, kind of like this reddish brown I really like that I've seen before, but just using the same color is pretty safe. I prefer to use a matching color as opposed to like a neutral color. I found neutral color waxes can sometimes leave like a strange opaqueness on it. I'd prefer just to use the same color wax just to keep that rich color. And the wax itself being like, you know, it'll never be a perfect match to the actual color of the leather, which I almost kind of like because, again, similar to using like an off color, it adds a sort of dynamic layer to the color of the leather where you just get something a little more interesting than the base color of the leather itself. And now I have, these are brand new, right? So I actually have the paper in these that comes with these Beckett Simonon loafers. You don't have to have shoe trees in to do this, but I really do recommend it. And you may as well, I mean, again, if you guys are spending two, three, four hundred dollars on a dress shoe, even just a hundred bucks, you really should budget to spend the 20, 35 bucks it costs to get shoe trees. Again, really much, uh, very much kind of like, you know, there's no point in buying a car if you're not gonna budget for tire and oil changes, right? It'll end up costing you more in the long run. You may as well just wrap that in. So same thing here, you may as well get shoe trees, you may as well get wax and conditioner. And now I'm doing one layer on these. I'm good with just one layer. You can do two if you want. I wouldn't suggest doing more than two because 
if you do too many layers of wax, you'll start to, it can actually crack because it forms a kind of a semi-hard layer on the leather. And if you make too thick of a layer on areas where it bends like the vamp, but in a lot of other areas in the shoe as well, it'll crack and that'll look really bad and things can kind of penetrate in between those cracks. It's just not great. So you really wanna stick with just one or two layers. If you live in an area that can have pretty harsh weather, Colorado is actually pretty mild even in the winter, but if you live in an area like Manhattan where you get a lot of rain, or Seattle, a lot of rain, Chicago or Manhattan where winters are pretty rough, then you might wanna consider doing two layers just for that extra protection. Let's see. Trying to think of other things I should talk about. We're just kind of in an awkward silence here, aren't we guys? This is, this is uncomfortable, but that's okay because we're all here being uncomfortable together. So that's looking pretty good. Again, it's kind of hazy, it looks kind of sad. That's okay because it'll uh, look really great when we brush it in just a moment. What I'm gonna do next though, is I'm actually gonna do the sole edge. So I like to put one layer of wax on the sole edge of my brand new shoes. This is arguably, maybe even less necessary, but I think it's really important to do. This is a really important step for like shoes that you've worn for a while where the sole edge is not already finished from the factory because this can really help seal up the sole edge to prevent water penetration where, you know, water is most likely going to penetrate the sole edge. Even if it's just wet out, it's not raining and uh, the upper will be fine, water will still get onto the edge of that sole. And you wanna help provide a barrier to protect it. And now I'm definitely just gonna do one layer here because once again, it's already finished from the factory. So you don't wanna to put too much on here. You especially don't want it to cake on the sole edge because like if you're ever walking somewhere where there's carpet, if you have too much wax on the sole edge, it can start to like rub off and that can be kind of not a good situation. Also, for the same reason, you don't put this stuff on the sole bottom. It may be tempting because the logic kind of applies in a very same way. You wanna waterproof the bottom of your shoe but there's different products for that, for that, and it's also I wouldn't consider as necessary. Really, you just wanna keep the wax on the sole edge and just keep it to one layer for brand new shoes if you wanna do it at all. And now I'm taking, you know, this video will be however long it is, maybe 20, 30 minutes, just taking a little bit as I'm filming and kind of doing things a little more slow and <clears throat> meditatively, but this could take you like 15, 20 minutes to do everything I'm showing you in this video. So it's really quick. And again, it'll really, really help your shoes. You'll thank yourself later for it. And more importantly, you'll regret it if you don't, if in six months you get a real rough stain or some water damage on your shoe that could have been prevented with just one or two layers of wax. All right, look at that. And so that's it. Really simple, really easy. This will stain your fingers a bit. You'll notice I can wash it off with water and a cloth and it'll come off a little bit more. But you know, if you really want no staining at all, like maybe you're going somewhere where it's important for you to have really clean hands, you can either wear a glove, that's totally fine, or you can actually rub your fingers under like 70 or 90% isopropyl alcohol. That'll really pull out the dye pretty well. But if you're super, super particular, you want to be really careful, just basic nitrile gloves will be fine. So that's it. Again, we're just gonna let this sit here for another five, 10 minutes. We're gonna go hang out under the table a little bit more, and we're gonna come back and give this a second brush. We're gonna do basically the same thing we did with the conditioner. We're just gonna brush this right up. And again, immediately you can see how that shine starts to pull out. What I'm gonna do here actually is shine basically half of it to show you guys. So you see how already kind of half the shoe is shined and half is still a little bit hazy. That's how quick this happens. Now one note I do wanna make is something I like to do when doing say the vamp. A lot of people do just like short brushes like that. that. Again, you don't want to do just these short brushes where the bristles are just bending back and forth, kind of like 
poking into the leather, you really want to have sweeping motion. So it's easy here on these ox on these loafers, but sometimes on Oxfords with a higher instep, I like to do the brush, hold it like that, and then kind of sweep up and down. And that way you still get the bristles dragging across, but you know, can still hit in the right direction these more curved areas. But otherwise we're gonna do the same thing just as before and also focusing on that sole edge as well. And you kind of just have to figure out how you want to hold these. You know, you can hold it however you want. You know, obviously you can hold it from the bottom. These shoes are brand new, so it doesn't matter at all. You can hold it from the inside. It can be a little awkward, but you just got to do your best. Again, kind of getting into that interior corner can be a bit of a pain. Having a brush with these outward bristles does make it a little bit easier because they naturally sort of fall in to that crevice. I like to also kind of curve the brush. That helps hit that area as well. Then I'll kind of hit the heel specifically, the heel block, and then we'll hit the actual heel of the upper. You know, again, you can hit it in kind of a few different directions just to make sure you get all of it brushed. But I like to end, this is especially important with the wax, to end with strokes that go all the same direction so you have a nice uniform shine. And that's it, right? That's a couple minutes and this is already Good to go. I mean, this shoe, now again, if you are ready to wear this like right after, I'd let the wax harden probably just like at least 30 minutes just to like really set before you take them out to give you a nice side by side. These are the shine ones and then these are unshined. So again, not much of a difference, right? And that's okay. There doesn't need to be much of a difference, but these are gonna be far more protected. That's it, simple as that. Now you've got brand new dress shoes. They're conditioned, they're ready to go, they're protected, but you're probably thinking, Christopher, isn't that wax layer gonna wear off? Isn't that conditioner going to eventually dry out? Don't I have to continue maintaining these? Yes, you do, and thankfully I have a video just for you that goes over exactly what you need to do for every level of shoe care and what products you need for a variety of different budgets everywhere from beginner to luxury shoe kingpin. I love you so much, I will see you soon.